Okay, we're uh, going through uh, uh, the approach to um, setting out a hip off a site square uh, or what's sometimes referred to as a builder square on site which is basically two rafters uh, off, uh, placed against each other to form an L and that L needs to be 90 degrees and um, here in this illustration here um, you can see um, we're using the uh, Pythagoras theorem, which is a typical example of that. Will be the three, four, five method. There's your three units in that direction, your three units and four, sorry, four units in this direction, and the diagonal then of that uh, should be five units. Um, so um, that's one method. Another method, by the way, is you could go uh, three units this direction and go the same measurement the other direction, which would also be three units. So and the diagonal of that, as you probably know, would be a 45 degree right angle triangle. So if you need to get the diagonal of a 45 degree right angle triangle, in other words, from here to approximately there, somewhere. Um, if you multiply the shorter side, which in this case would be 3, multiply 3 by the square root of 2, it will give you what the diagonal distance on that 45 degree right angle triangle should be. Okay, so that's another method of squaring two uh, pieces timber together off each other. So, we uh, just have an animation moving in here just to illustrate the point that it needs to be a uh, sorry, uh, right angle triangle. Or sorry, yeah, right angle triangle. And here is your brace just gone there off the screen to keep it at 90 degrees. Brace piece of timber or piece of plywood would do. Um, so now next we have to figure out the rise distance so for our hip. And uh, to use that, we need to use this formula here. And this formula basically is you take the half span of your roof, uh, whatever it is outside the wall plate, outside the wall plate, the half span of your roof, hit the multiplication sign on your scientific calculator, make sure you're in degree mode, of course, hit the tan button, hit equal, uh, put in the pitch, of course, of the roof, whatever the angle, whatever the degree of pitch of your roof is, hit the equal sign, and there is the rise distance for that roof. And the common and the hip share the same rise, they are the same rise. So you'll be measuring up this leg now. The, uh, the the rise for that roof as will be shown here now in the animation so basically hook your tape on there spring up the measurement mark it and that is your rise distance so um, next thing we got to get the hip run which is going to be on the other leg of the square the longer leg usually and uh, again we'll be using a formula here pretty simple enough formula to use again you're using the half span you're hitting the multiplication sign again this time you're hitting the square root of two and if you hit the square root of 2 and hit the equal sign, straight away you'll get the hip run for that roof. So that'll give you the distance to measure along this leg here. So that'll be animated here now. Uh, hook your tape on the leg of the square, measure out the answer you got from the formula, and mark it. And uh, that'll be the, where the bird's mouth will initially occur. Uh, so um, the next step here then is to uh, mark the hip tail run. So from the bird's mouth out to the face where the fascia meets on the corner we'll also need to use this formula here and uh, this formula again is the hip tail run in other words the overhang from the wall plate measured out horizontally to the fascia cut on the common rafter and multiply by that to square root 2 and that'll give you the hip tail run and remember a run distance is usually on the horizontal plane wherever you see the word it means a horizontal measurement uh, not on an incline, it's on a horizontal plane. So remember that always when you see that. So here we're going to mark the um, run for the hip tail here now at this moment. There you go. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to place the hip rafter on the side square. And I just drew a line here just to illustrate that this line forms the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle we've talked about earlier. So the back of our hip is now going to line up with this line here this 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 um, this line uh, that you see on the screen is very fine line so that'll be animated here right now so here comes the uh, hip into view uh, shortly and uh, and there you can see I usually line up the very corner of the hip so I have something to hook my tape and or whatever later on you know and I know where I'm measuring from a certain point so um, it's just handy to line up the very corner there and sure look if you have to screw them in place to, so nothing moves when you go down to the other leg do so once you know both ends right the other end has to align here often when apprentices start setting this out first they end up lining up the hip over with at this point here which would be incorrect so bear that in mind it's it's the hip run not the tail run point you'll be aligning up to so 
So that's the, now once you've done this here, then you have you know you have positioned the hip correctly onto the um, side square or builder square, as it's sometimes referred to as. So then you get your bevel as shown here, and you'll swing that blade. If you notice that blade and the the leg of the square here are on the one are aligned to each other, so you'll be swinging the blade out to line up with the rise leg of the square. In other words, so that's already set here now. And you'll see when it's that marked here, it will just be sliding down that bevel down to this point here. Uh, so I'll just continue on the animation there. So there's hand coming in there. Draw your line. Slide the bevel down. It's the same angle. It's the hip plumb cut. It's the same angle. And this is down at the corner of the wall plate or the bird's mouth initial position. And then to get the next position out of the fascia, use a square. Pick your point up there. And then get the bevel still set at the same angle. And that's the third plumb, plumb line you're drawing there. So you're now out of the fascia. So, yeah, this the next thing we have to remember though is um, okay, we have three plumb lines now drawn on the side of our hip, but there are some deductions to be made. Um, so we're going to zoom in here now on the tail, and uh, on the tail here, I've um, just drawn in. I've drawn in the plan view of the uh, hip where it interacts with the wall plate. So here in grey is the wall plate uh, cut off, of course. And uh, <clears throat> you'll see a hidden line here. Now, that's the back of where the bird's mouth uh, heel cut will end up because we wanted the back of the bird's mouth to sit neatly into the corner of the wall plate. So obviously the corner of the wall plate would have formed a point out around here. And then you'd have a gap either side if we left it that way. So it wouldn't be sitting in neatly, the hip itself, as it were. So... I've just done a little animation here just to illustrate what I'm saying. That that corner of that wall plate will be cut off to accommodate moving in the heel cut of the um, uh, of the for, for the bird's mouth on the hip. And uh, you'll see it illustrated here now. Uh, in, um, our animated, in other words, yeah. So there's the co there's the corner I told you about. That gets cut off now with the, with the red line around it, the right angle, little right angle triangle, and that's being cut away and discard it and you see there's a new position now for the back of the bird's mouth so initially we drew this line but now you can see the fact that we've cut off that corner uh, that we have to go from there now to there and we'll be drawing a new line here which will be the final position for the uh, heel cut or the heel line for the back of the bird's mouth and uh, we'll just continue that animation there so here's a black line just to illustrate down how the effect is on the side elevation or on the view that you have on the side square here. So this is the plan view of that same line and this is the side view of the same one. So there, there are two uh, different views you're looking at there on the screen. So um, and of course out here at the fascia uh, we're at the point here the white line's at the point fair enough but we need to get the co this other line to run our skill saw on. Uh, which is the shoulder line right here and where is that on the side here so we'll project it down and uh, there you are on the side and uh, just put it into words there uh, the offsets here are half the hip thickness that's the distance we moved in on both cases here so uh, the next uh, next scenario here is marking the hip seat cut itself so first we must transfer the upstand distance now this is the upstand distance here we're referring to so that distance is going to get transferred up here to where the bird's mouth is going to occur. And uh, next we're going to set our bevel to this angle from between this line and this line. And uh, here it is now and it's already set to that angle. That is the seat cut angle. So flip your bevel then on the and slide it down on the underbelly of the hip and then from the bottom of the upstand draw a line from here to there. And that's your bird's mouth drawn. And uh, yeah, that's the way it's marked in. So now um, <clears throat> at the top of the hip, where it comes in between the crown and the common and meets the ridge almost, um, that's that's another scenario I just want to explain to you here because there is deductions to be made here and I just want you to make sense of the deductions. That's why I'm, I'm superimposing another small section of the plan view of that intersection which is about to appear here now so you can make sense of what's happening. So here's a line diagram version of all the intersections up at that point. And coming into screen here, that will be the center line of our ridge. This is the center line of our two commons at the end of the ridge. And this is the line of the crown. And this is the line then of the two hips. 
So <clears throat> if you're ever drawing uh, this intersection, just draw this way first. Draw center lines first. And then add in the thicknesses in the same process as if you were erecting the roof. So if we were erecting the roof, the next thing to come into play here would be, okay, we'd have the ridge board coming in. And either side then of the ridge board, you would have your two common rafters. It's coming into screen here now. And they've just made contact there with the ridge board. And then at the end of the ridge board, you'll have your crown rafter. <coughs> So now you have, and of course, the last thing to drop into place, which is it will be the case on site, is the hip rafter. So <clears throat> if you look carefully here, you will see that, okay, this white line that we initially drew here brings us into there. But of course, the tip of the hip itself has never made it that far. So what do we do? Well, we have to make this deduction from here to here which really represents half the diagonal thickness of a common rafter. If you draw a 45 degree line on that common rafter there, that is the same distance. So the term half the diagonal of the common rafter, it refers to the thickness of the common rafter. So that's the first deduction. You'll see a line dropping from here then onto here. And then to get the shoulder line for that, then you'll see another line dropping uh, from here down to here. So I'll just animate to illustrate then why, what deductions we have to make. And I'll just put in there, it is a plan view. So, <clears throat> There's the red line coming down, and that's the very tip of the um, hip, where it come, where it meets the common rafter and the crown rafter. But for the chap with the skill saw, he needs a line then on the side of the rafter to run a skill saw. And of course, the blade will be set at 45 degrees facing outwards, but he needs that line to run a skill saw on. So here is the red line, and that's the skill saw line, in other words. So just to put in words then of just this animation here, the first offset thickness here is half the diagonal of your common rafter thickness. So you get the, that has to be the first one always, by the way. It can't be the second, it must be the first to get onto the point, as you can see illustrated here. And uh, then the second deduction then would be like down at the other end of the rafter, just half the hip thickness itself. <clears throat> so here's an animation now just showing you um, what's gonna look like when you cut it off with a skill saw. And you'll see ingrain appearing here because it's actually a point, it's been pointed. So um, there you go. That's just illustrating how it'll now look. And then down at the other end, similar scenario. We're cutting the tail, so you'll see this section here. It'll have ingrain because, again, that's the point. That's the point. That's the shoulder that forms the point. So this is the line you'll be running the skills on. So you'll see these cut away now. So you'll see ingrain here, as I said here, because it's now becoming a point. <clears throat> so there you go, yeah. So now it's pointed down at the fascia. That's the fascia point down at the end of it. And you'll see the bird's mouth being cut away. And by the way, of course, you know that with any bird's mouth, usually, uh, you know, the seat cut and the heel cut should look 90 degrees to each other. If you're on site and you're cutting this and they don't look 90 degrees to each other, there is something wrong. You've got to check, so you've got to find out what's going on here. they got to be 90 degrees to each other. 99.9% .9 of the time. If you don't see, there's something wrong. Yeah, Because your wall plate is square top surface wall plate and the and the edge of wall plate is square to each other so of course this has to relate to that so so um the next step here is determine the hip tail soffit cut position so this comes up often often there's confusion you know you have your you have the length of your fascia cut here on your common rafter from here to here and you know it's over here it's going to occur somewhere so the question is do i put that measurement here or do i put it here on this shoulder so this animation will show you uh, where it goes and why because you could see it transfer over now directly and just to recap what we said earlier on about our upstand distance uh, you know we have the two i have the two wall plates level here and uh, of course you can see the common rafter is a steeper pitch uh, always than the um, hip is so and i have the wall plates the one level so you can see the upstand transfer across here and you'll see the distance where to apply this fascia cut uh, fascia length or fascia line to determine the soffit cut on the hip <coughs> where that uh, where that goes to here which is actually here so it's animated now <coughs> so that's your upstand there and this is your fascia line and that it's on the shoulder line where you're running the skill saw that's where you take that distance and that's the when it cuts away then that shows you the distance there just a little points here on when you're nailing in the hip there is often a problem where People go to nail in the hip, but maybe they might straighten up the hip, and then the, 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 this end of the hip fishtails out to one side a little bit. And you can see here, if it fishtails, <coughs> you've come away from your fascia line. That's your fascia line. This, this is the line that lines up the fascia cuts on your 
jack rafters and common rafters they all should be aligned with that <coughs> sometimes some of the common rafters might look in in a little bit or out a little bit the ones that look in a bit are usually them rafters have a hump in them that yet yet has to be pulled down but usually when that hump is pulled down they will pull out and line then at the facial line so don't worry if you look down along here and see some of the common rafter uh, uh, facial cuts look uh, look like they're in uh, from alignment uh, when you take the hump from that rafter they will pull out that line or down close to it and uh, usually the rafters that are furthest out are the, one, the rafters that are straight the ones that are out the furthest so just bear that in mind another tip I'll give you here is usually I leave off the last smallest jack here <coughs> until I have all the other uh, until I have the fascia on and then I put in the jack uh, to wherever it fits because the smaller the jacks the less forgiven they are in terms of keeping alignment here so just a little tip i give you there but anyways just get back to the fishtailing aspect here of a hip <coughs> rafter so <coughs> if you don't if you don't uh, spring a line as we're going to illustrate here now this is what you can end up with and um, but again as you're nailing on the fascia you can sometimes pull that fishtail out as you're nailing on the fascia but just i want you to be aware of it okay okay so here we go <coughs> So that's what happens with your facial line. You can see in red there, it, it's gone out of alignment. So that's what we're trying to avoid. So uh, here are the steps here now, uh, as outlined here. Um, basically, uh, draw a center line with your um, combination square, I suppose. They don't have to be that close together in these yellow lines. And um, then spring a line, basically, is the point that's been met here along the center also. And once the pencil line and the builder's line, which is in red, are lining up to each other, you know you have a dead straight hip. So as you're nailing on the jacks, you'll be watching that line as well, you know, as you come up the roof. And just another final note here. And sometimes when you drop in the hip, it drops in a bit sh short, a bit low. And so sometimes that could be because the wall plate, out of the corner of the wall plate with the bird's mouth, it's slightly low. So you check with your level. If you think it is, wedge it up a tad. And she'll rise up then at the top to suit you. By the way, another way of finding the hip run is if you measure the half span of the roof up on one leg as shown here and then on the other leg the same distance which is a half span the diagonal between those two is the hip run so that's a quick way of finding it as well and um, also the same procedure for finding the hip tail run but in this case uh, you'll be using a different approach so um, it's just coming up here now and um, if you measure the um, common tail run up one leg of the square and measure the common tail run on the other leg of the square well the diagonal of that is the hip tail run so and that could be done on a sheet of a corner of sheet of plywood as well by the way because it's so small 